welcome back to this online uh, classes let's continue with our subject new testament studies uh last time i told you to read first corinthians chapter 15 and verse 29 i hope you did it uh, before we begin anything else let's read from the scripture first corinthians chapter 15 and verse 29 first corinthians chapter 15 and verse 29 otherwise what will they do who were baptized for the dead if the dead do not rise at all why then are they baptized for the dead now apostle paul is saying otherwise what will they do were baptized for the dead if the dead do not rise at all if the dead person do not rise up then why are they baptizing the dead why then are they baptized for the dead now Paul's idea is if the dead is not rising up why do they baptize that means that a bap uh, baptism for the dead or baptism of the dead is necessary or it is compulsory here okay that is what uh, people misinterpreted this scripture portion and for, for us let us study what do we mean by uh, this verse okay so to your notes let's go to your notes um, okay here it goes baptism of the dead first Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 29 let's read to your notes numerous explanations have been offered for this verse um, starting or ranging from the inent to the sophisticated in particular this claim that uh, has, no has claimed that this verse supports their view of baptism that means Mormonism for the dead in this in their practice individual go to their a local Mormon temple dressed appropriately for baptism representatively adopt the name of the person who has died and then the Mormon is baptized in water for that deceased person this way the dead person has fulfilled the requirements of salvation in the afterworld and can further uh, spiritual benefits in spiritual realm so the Mormonism they practice uh, in such a way that if a person die or if the person die without baptism or your person dies without the saving knowledge of Christ okay then in the place of him one person will dress very well and uh, he will take the name of the deceased or that dead person and that person will baptize okay so if the person baptized then the person who died will go to heaven okay for example mr a died and mr b mr a died without the saving knowledge of jesus christ okay then mr b will take in the place of mr a and he will take the name of mr a and he will put all his uh, drays and then go to uh, uh, go for baptism and mr b will take baptism and once mr b took baptism then mr a will go to heaven okay that is what they practice okay this is what mormonism practice but to your notes the mormons are incorrect they have observed these verse and take it out of context so let's examine first Corinthians chapter 15 briefly so we can see what paul is talking about when he mentions baptism for the dead so mormon is wrong and mormon is incorrect here they are uh you know misusing the verse or they misunderstood this verse first Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 29 so let's study what paul actually is talking here in first Corinthians chapter 15 now to your notes in verse uh, 1 to 19 verses 1 to 19 the fact of christ 
resurrection is detailed by Paul beginning in verse 20 and going through verse 23 Paul speak about speaks about the order of the resurrection Christ was the first one who rose in a glorified body and next will be those are those who are his at his return verse 24 to 29 then mention Christ's reign and the abolition of death this is when this ver the controversial uh, verse come uh, occurred otherwise what will those who do or who are baptized for the death if the dead are not raised at all why then are they baptized for them so first Corinthians chapter 15 as we know that this is a chapter of resurrection so paul is the giving the detail or the sequence of how the resurrection is okay first of all christ rose from the dead and secondly those who believe in christ or in his return will rise up and uh, uh, that is how and then Christ will come and abolish the death okay that is a sequence that Paul is giving here now in between of that this verse comes and this makes controversial for all of us okay so what is first Corinthians chapter 15 verse 29 talking about okay to your notes okay let's read from your notes just north of Corinth was a city named Eleusis. Okay, this was the location of the pagan religion where baptism in the sea was practiced to guarantee a good afterlife. This religion was mentioned by Homer in hymn to Demeter or uh, uh, in on in AD seven uh, four seven eight. To 479, um, 479. Bible knowledge commentary on 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 29. The Corinthians were known to have heavily influenced by other custom. After all, they were in a large economic area where a great many different people frequently. It is probably that the Corinthians were being influenced by the religious practice found in Eleusis where baptism for the dead was practiced. So the history is this or the background is this. Just north to the Corinthian uh, the Corinth, uh, city, there is a city called Eleusis, okay, the pagan cities. And the pagan cities there, what do these pagan uh, uh, practice? They practice that uh, a person, if a person die, they go to a sea and baptize the person so that this uh, uh, dead person will go to heaven. Okay, his or her soul will go to heaven. Okay, that is how they practice. And this pagan also believe that once a dead person is baptized, that means he will live again or he will have a resurrected body. Okay, that is what they believe. And since Corinthian is, uh, Corinth city is, uh, uh, you know, surrounded by so many uh, pagan religion and then so many uh, people comes there for their, uh, you know, business purpose because that is a metropolitan city. So that is how they developed or they copied or they were influenced by those religions. And they were very much profound or they were very much known by these uh, uh, practices. So Paul is using the illustration here. Okay, read carefully the verse there. Paul used this example from uh, the pagan in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 29 when he said, If the dead are not raised, then why are they? It is not we. Why are they? That means pointing to someone else. Okay, third person. Why are they baptized for the dead? That means why are those illusions? who are pagan baptized for the dead see they also believe that resurrection they believe uh, they believe resurrection there will be resurrection so even if the pagan believes that there is a resurrection why can't we believe that there is a resurrection okay paul emphasized on resurrection it is not on baptism 
Okay, they believe that there is a resurrection. That is why they baptize. So why can't we believe that there is a resurrection? Okay, that is the point here. So Paul is bringing someone's example here to show that even the pagans believe that there is a resurrection. So why can't we believe that there is a resurrection? So for us, there is a resurrection life of the dead. Since Jesus Christ rose from the dead, okay, we will be raised up again. Okay, we will be resurrected again. That is the main point over here. Okay, this is a significant because Christian church was not practicing baptism for the dead, but the pagans were. Paul, Paul's point was simple. The resurrection is a reality. It is going to happen when Jesus returns. Even the pagans believe in the resurrection. Otherwise, why would they baptize for the dead? See, even the pagan believe that there is a resurrection, then why can't we believe that there is a resurrection? So that is the point over here. It is nothing uh, regarding the baptism of the day. Now, when we baptize, now when we follow this verse and when we uh, uh, take this one as literal, okay, then it controverts the other scripture portion. So there is no baptism of the dead. There is no baptism for the dead. Okay, once a person dies, it is going to face the judgment. Okay, it is going to, uh, he or she is going to face the judgment. So there is no baptism of the dead. I hope everyone is clear of this point. Now, for the next class, baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay, Acts chapter 14. Uh, 19 verses 1 through 6. Please read Acts chapter 19 verses 1 through 6. We will continue with this uh, topic in the next class. Okay, as of now we'll wind up. Thank you. God bless you.